The other fiber being processed at Mount Vernon was wool. After the sheep were shorn, the fleeces were carried to the wash house on the south lane of the main mansion house estate. Here they were skirted and cleaned. Skirting involved trimming away the dirtiest part of the fleece from the belly and backside of the sheep. Wool that had been cut, washed, and combed was then spun into thread and yarn. Here's how it worked. The spinner pressed down on the foot pedal to activate the machine. The foot pedal turned the larger of two wheels called the drive wheel. The drive wheel turned a cord called the drive band. The drive band had no connection to the spinner's thread. Instead, the drive band acted like the chain of a bicycle. It turned the small U-shaped flywheel. The spinner's thread was twisted onto a bobbin in the center of the flywheel. Every time the flywheel rotated, the thread twisted onto the bobbin. The twist worked to bind together any fibers the spinner fed into the machine. The spinner could see the twist of the fibers taking place between her hands. She controlled the size of the thread she made by drawing the fibers out between her hands just a bit at a time. Thick thread required more fibers, while thin thread required fewer fibers. An unsung task, but a very important one, was winding off of the thread from the spinning wheel bobbin. Wound off onto a device called a nitty knotty, the thread was measured into yards and stretched into a skein of yarn or thread. This task was most likely done by the elderly members of the spinning house. The next step in the life of a skein of thread was to be gently washed in warm, soapy water, then to be rinsed in cooler, clear water. Finally, the skein was stretched to dry. The enslaved Mima and Letty might finish this work. Measured, cleaned, and stretched, the skein could then be used for knitting, weaving, and dyeing with color.